In section 5-6, we're going to introduce to you something called the Law of Sines. We've spent a lot of time talking about right triangles and finding missing sides and angles. It's really easy when you use just a general trig identity. But if you don't have a right triangle, you cannot use sine, cosine, and tangent in order to find the missing sides and angles. So we need another way. So I introduced to you the law of sines for non-right triangles, although it does work for right triangles. If you have a triangle, ABC, whose side lengths are also ABC, the side opposite angle A is side A, the side opposite angle B is side B, and the side opposite angle C is side C. The law of sine says that if you make a proportion out of ratios from the sine of an angle over its corresponding side, they will all be equivalent. In other words, the sine of angle A over side A will be the same as the sine of angle B over side B will be the same as the sine of angle C over side C. The nice thing about proportions is that we can also flip them. So sometimes the law of sines is, is given um, like this bottom one it's the same set of ratios. It's just they've all been flipped. So whichever one seems to make more sense to you is the one you should probably use. What I'd like to do is I'd like to start with a triangle we already know to show you why the uh, law of sines works. So in the 45, 45, 90 triangle, because it was isosceles, in geometry, we learn to label the sides 1, 1, square root of 2. The legs of the right triangle are both 1, and the hypotenuse was the square root of 2. The law of sine says that angle A, which is 45, over side A, which is 1, must be equal to the sine of angle B, which is 45, over side B, which is 1, must be equal to the sine of angle C, angle C is 90, over side C, which is the square root of 2. Well, what's the sine of 45 degrees? Well, remember, if you want to uh, you can use this right triangle or you can do the hand trick, you know, if you're going to do the hand trick, here's your hand, there's a 2 in the middle. This is your 45 degree angle. You pull that finger in, and uh, the sine is what's below your finger that you pull in. There are two fingers below that middle finger, and you square root them, so it's a square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of 90 degrees, you can actually do the hand trick for the sine of 90 degrees. If you pull in, here I'll do another hand. If you pull in this finger, the sine of 90 is the square root of the fingers below it over 2. Well, what's the square root of 4? It's 2. What's 2 over 2? It's 1. Well, the square root of 2 over 2 over 1 is, is, is just the square root of 2 over 2. And 1 over the square root of 2, if you rationalize it, you get the square root of 2 over 2. So what happens is all of these fractions are equal to each other. They're really just a set of proportions. So let's do an example of using the law of sines. In example 1, we want to solve triangle LMN. If angle L is 29 degrees, angle M is 112 degrees, and side L is 22. All right, so I'm going to start by drawing general triangle X. I always draw this triangle every time. Since the angles are L, M, and N, it really doesn't matter where you put them. I'll put them here. How does that look? Angle L is 29, so that's this. Angle M is 112. I realize that that is an obtuse angle. And I didn't make an obtuse angle, but for the purposes of do, using the law of sines, it's not going to matter. And side L is 22. So the question is, where's side L? 
Side L is opposite angle L. All right, solving the triangle. We've learned this before. It means finding all the missing sides and angles. I like to make myself a little chart. And I fill in the givens. The reason I like to fill in the givens is because it helps me when I'm trying to find missing sides. All right, look at what I have. What's the easiest thing to find first? Well, the easiest thing to find first is angle N. That's because the angles inside a triangle always add up to 180. So in order to find angle N, you just do 180 minus 29 minus 112, and you're going to find out it's 39 degrees. Okay, now i got to find side M or side N. This is how the law of sines works. You need an angle and its corresponding side. You're going to start by writing the sine of 29 over 22. And then we're going to set that equal to the sine of another angle. Let's just use M because it's the next one. M is 112, but I don't know side M. I have a proportion. How do you solve proportions? You cross multiply. So when I cross multiply, I get m times the sine of 29 is equal to 22 times the sine of 112. I'm not going to take the sine of 29 or the sine of 112 yet. I'm going to wait and put this in my calculator at the end because I want the most exact answer I can get. If you do the sine of 29 and the sine of 112 now, and you get a decimal that you round, and then you finish the problem and you round again, you're going to have a rounding error. So we're going to avoid that by saying, well, the next step is this. This goes away, and now I'm ready to put this in my calculator. The way it should look in my calculator is I should type in 22 sine 112, close the parentheses, divide by sine 29, and then hit enter. And I'm going to find out that m is approximately 42.1. All right, so now I'm ready to put this here. Now, one of the biggest mistakes students make at this point in time is they forget that they're not dealing with a right triangle and think they can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. No, you can't. You have to do another proportion. So, I am going to start with the same given information that I started with. Because I don't want to use a rounded decimal in my problem. But this time I'm going to set it equal to the sine of 39 over sine n. And it's a proportion, so let's cross multiply again. I'm going to get n times the sine of 29 is equal to 22 times the sine of 39. And then to get n by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 29. Now I'm ready to put this in my calculator. Remember that it's going to give you parentheses. You need to close the parentheses or it's going to not give you the answer you're expecting. And you should get 28.6. And now I've solved the triangle. In this next problem, we're going to be using some geometry. A person in a hot air balloon observes that the angle of depression to a building on the ground is 65.8 degrees. All right, I'm going to stop because I'm going to go down to this picture. The guy starts in the hot air balloon, and then there's the building on the ground. The angle of depression, remember, is the angle that goes down from the horizontal. So if I draw a horizontal line from the balloon, and then I go down to that line going down to the building, that's going to be 65.8 degrees. Okay.
Now let's go back up. After ascending vertically 500 feet, that means going up, the person now observes that the angle of depression is 70.2 degrees. Okay, so this balloon just went up 500 feet. And now from here down to that same spot, sorry, it's a bad triangle. Let's try that again. It's a little bit better. Now the angle of depression is 70.2 degrees. We want to find how far the balloonist now is now from the building. We want to find this length here. So I'm going to use that as a different color. Now I want you to notice that I've created this non-right triangle, haven't I? Now, in order to use the law of sines, you need a side and its corresponding angle. That means the angle is opposite the side. So watch this. Because I drew a horizontal up here, this is really a right angle. So if the outside of the triangle is 70.2, to find the angle in the triangle, you would subtract it from 90. And 90 minus 70.2 is going to be 19.8. So this angle up here is 19.8 degrees. This angle here, part of it is 65.8, but the other part of it is 90. This one's going to be 90 plus 65.8, which is going to be 155.8 degrees. Well, now I know two of the three angles inside the triangle in order to find this angle down here, which is opposite my side. I need to remember that the three angles inside a triangle add up to 180. So if I subtract 180 minus 155.8 minus 19.8, I'm left with 4.4 degrees. Now, to help me with this problem, I'm going to label this, the angles on the triangle. I'll call this angle A, angle B, and angle C. So I know side C, this is side C, and I want to find side B because that's the side that's the hot air balloon's distance from the building now. So in order to do this, we're going to use the law of sines. I'm going to do the sine of 4.4 degrees over 500 is equal to, since I want to find side B, I'm going to use angle B, the sine of 155.8. This is just a proportion, so B times the sine of 4.4 is going to equal 500 times the sine of 155.8. I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 4.4. This goes away. And then I plug into my calculator 500 sine of 155.8 divided by sine of 4.4. And I'm going to find out that B is approximately 2,671.6 feet. But in order to do this problem, I had to use some geometry techniques. Remember, the angle of depression goes down from the horizontal. Since the balloon ascended vertically, straight up and down, we created some 90-degree angles here, which helped us to find the angles inside our triangle. And then I set up the law of sines to find the missing side of this triangle that I created in my picture. This is one of those cases where if you had not drawn a picture of the scenario, I don't think you would have gotten the answer. In geometry, you should have reviewed area of a triangle. The formula you used was the area was one half the base of the triangle times the height. A lot of times you had a height that was an altitude within the triangle. In geometry, you should have done problems where you had to find the height of the triangle. You probably had to do some algebraic calculations. 
There's actually another way of doing this problem without having to find the altitude inside the triangle in order to multiply 1 half base times height. So let's do this. I created triangle ABC where H is the altitude. And then I made side B the bottom of the triangle, so that's going to be our base. What if I don't know what H is? But I know that this is side A, and I know this is side C. Well, one of the things that I can do to find out what H is, is I could use a trig function to solve for H, because that altitude creates two right triangles. And if you have a right triangle, you can use a trig function. So I'm going to go to how do I find H? Well, notice that H is the side opposite and C is the hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is opposite over hypotenuse, where the height would be C times the sine of angle A. Well, now that I know the height and the base is B, the area is going to be 1 half base times height. Here's a problem, though. I'm not going to use A for area because I'm using A for that angle. So the textbook and all the pre-calculus textbooks I've used have done the same thing. They instead use K. Now, this is not the only way of doing this problem. I could have instead used this angle over here in order to find the height using angle C. Here's my opposite, H, and my hypotenuse this time would be side A. So the sine of angle C would be opposite over hypotenuse. So the height would be A times the sine of angle C. So the area would be 1 half base times height. Or I could have used angle C if I were to put an altitude in a different place. So if I use angle C, I'm sorry, B, I should say. If I used angle B, but instead I put the altitude here, and I called that H, then I would have done the sine of angle B is opposite over, and in this case, the hypotenuse would be side A. So the height would be A times the sine of angle B. So the area would be 1 half the base times the height. This is what I want you to notice about all three of these formulas. Let's go back to the purple one for a moment. When I use angle A, I ended up multiplying sides B and C together. Well, B and C are adjacent to each other. Wait a second. I've got side, angle, side. And that's kind of interesting. All right, let me go to the red equation. The red equation was 1 half B times A times the sine of angle C. Well, here's B, or sorry, that's A, and B, and angle C. Wait a second, I have side, angle, side. The same thing happened when I moved my altitude and I found the area using angle B. So the green equation, I multiply C and A together, and then the sine of angle B, and I have side, angle, side. So instead of memorizing this formula the way it is, the way I usually like to tell students is the area of a triangle when you don't know the height is one half of one side times the adjacent side times the sine of the included angle. That means the angle between them. If you have side angle side, you can find the area of the triangle. Let's do an example. In example three, we want to find the area of triangle ABC if side B is 21.2, side C is 16.5, and angle A is 25. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw general triangle X. Here's my triangle ABC. 
so angle A is here. Side B is here because that's the side opposite angle B. And side C is here because that's the side opposite angle C. Do I have side angle side? I do. If I have side angle side, then I'm going to find the area by doing one half of one side times the other side times the sine of the included angle. And then I just need to shove that in my calculator, and I'll get 73.9. And don't forget that area is in square units, and but I don't know what the units are, so I'm just going to say square units. Oops, I wanted to circle that. What if you don't have side angle side? What if you have angle side angle? Well, we have another set of definitions, although I'm going to honestly tell you we rarely ever use these formulas for finding the area if you're given angle side angle. If you're given two angles in a triangle, guess what? You can find the third one from subtracting them from 180. So the area formulas are, and this is the pattern that I want you to notice, if you know side A, then notice the sine of angle A goes in the denominator and the other two go on top. If you know side B, then the sine of angle B is in the denominator. If you know side C, then the sine of angle C goes in the denominator. Let's do an example of using this formula. Example four, find the area of triangle JKL. If little j is 45.7, angle K is 111.1, and angle L is 27.3 degrees. All right, so I'm gonna start with General triangle, J, K, L. I know angle K is 111.1. I know angle L is 27.3. And I know side J, which is the side opposite angle J, is 45.7. Notice that I have angle side angle. The first thing I might do is I'm going to find the missing angle by subtracting the other two angles from 180. So I'm going to find out that angle J is 41.6 degrees. So now in order to find the area, I'm going to do one half of the side given, which was 45.7 squared. And since I was given side J, the sine of angle J will go in the denominator. The other two will go on top. So the sine of 111.1 and the uh, sine of, I'm running out of space, 27.3, sorry. Now, how am I going to do this in my calculator? This is what I would recommend. My recommendation is multiply these together and then divide by the sine of 41.6. Leave that answer in your calculator and then multiply it by 45.7 squared, and then multiply it by 1 half or 0.5. And then you should get an answer of 673.0, and then we're going to call it square units. So again, the best way to go about dealing with this problem in your calculator, do the fraction first, then multiply it by the 45.7 squared and the 1 half. And that is an introduction to the law of signs. There are exceptions to the law of signs. We're going to cover those in section 5-7.